Hi everyone and welcome to another webinar in the Rig Run Recovery Zone series. Uh, my name is Shona King and I'm going to be hosting today's session on behalf of Rig Run. So just a quick reminder, if you are joining us live today, then if you wouldn't mind just turning off your camera and mics this now, but if you do have any questions, pop them in the chat and we'll try our best to get to these at the end. Um, the session is being recorded and it will be available on the Rig Run Recovery Zone website uh, in due course. So today we are joined by Ali Mathers. Welcome, Ali. Hi. So, hi. Ali is uh, not only a chartered psychologist, but she's a very experienced yoga practitioner and teacher. And she's also a long distance runner. And she's here to, today to talk about breathing and how breathing can not only help our mental health, but how it might have an impact on sporting performance too. So I'm going to hand over to Ali without further ado. So thank you, Ali. Okay, well, thank you for that introduction. What I'll do is I will share my screen and hopefully this will all work. So just give me two seconds. And let's see if I can share my screen. Screen. Okay, so I am sharing a PowerPoint. I'm wondering if you can see that. I'm going to just put it at the beginning and take it from there. So hopefully, Shona, can we see, can we see that? Yes, we can see it perfectly. Okay, so thank you for that introduction. So as um, Shona said, I am an educational psychologist. Um, and I have been practicing yoga now for, oh, I think, probably around 16 years. And the reason um, I'm particularly interested in breath, in fact, so interested in that I am conducting research in the form of a PhD around it, is the fact that in psychology, we view, I, I, I talk about mental health all the time. However, my real impetus is to think about everything's all connected. So um, physical, mental, social, emotional health is all connected. And there's one thing that really connects our whole physiology, and that is our breath. So. Today, what I just want to do is give you a very brief introduction and raise some awareness about this thing that we do daily unconsciously. Raise awareness of the effects of how different breathing patterns can affect us. Just develop a brief understanding and how we can control our breath and then the physical effects that that can have on us. Um, a little insight to what a breath, pra breath practice might look like and consider the benefits of possibly developing one. So basically, if you're alive, you are breathing. OK, we can go without food, sleep, water for you know a considerable period of time, but we really can't go at all without breathing for a few minutes. As we know, breathing happens completely automatically every moment of our lives. I think typically around 12 to 22 times per minute. So we move air in and out of our lungs. It's essential fuel which is delivered to places in every every part of the body. Every single cell in the body requires oxygen. So without it, we cannot move, met, met, metabolize or transform food into energy. And we breathe out carbon dioxide. So the ability to balance these go gases automatically, if you actually stop and think about it, well, I, I, I think is pretty miraculous. I mean, the body is fairly, fairly amazing. So our breathing responds automatically to metabolic needs of the body and continue regulates our energy and our arousal. So we breathe faster under exertion, slower and deeper during relaxation. So there's certain phrases that you might, you know, take my breath away when we, you know, we suddenly see something or we've, we've heard something, our breath is impacted. After a distressing event, breath, we can be left breathless. 
not necessarily in a positive ne positive way. So when we experience threat in the form of a shock, disapproval, ridicule, or or something that we're that we're not sure about, we can curtail our breathing. So so our breath is literally affected by everything that we that we do. Now, I always think it's interesting to go through through the centuries, even thousands of years, you know, thinking historically um, about things that we still do today that we've done for thousands of years, because that kind of is a telling thing. So throughout history, healers have discovered the power of breathing to enhance physical, mental and spiritual well-being. Now, I'm not here to convert anybody into anything, but it's just a, an insight into oh, there must be something in it. You know, shamans, monks, priests, tribal leaders, they've learned how to turn on the body's natural abilities to prevent and cure illnesses. So in yoga, breathing practice, which is referred to as pranayama, is one of the classical limbs of yoga, and it's a huge, huge component of yoga. Though we don't have to be in a yoga studio to practice yoga, we can do this at any time. And as a limb of yoga, you can just choose to possibly practice your breathing. You don't have to be doing fancy postures or anything. Martial arts, it's a huge component of a martial arts, thinking of um, using, using your breath. Studies which have been going ongoing for years. However, they've gained some real impetus. And I'm going to say in the past five, 10 years, studies are revealing that by changing the patterns of breath, it's possible to restore balance to our stress response systems, calm an agitated mind, and relieve symptoms of anxiety, post-traumatic stress. So improving physical, physical health and endurance and elevate performance in athletics. So huge, huge scopes. I'm very briefly going to touch on heart rate variability, just to mention what it actually is. And this is very much from my research point of view. It is not, I'm not a medical doctor. And so there's a huge, huge um, description medically as to what this is. But this kind of gives me and hopefully yourself an insight as to why we might be breathing. So our heart rate variability is the changing rate of breathing patterns alters our heart rate variability a heart rate variability reflecting shifts in an autonomic nervous system activity. So keeping this simple, heart rate variability is the measure of the variation in time between the heartbeat. So you'll have watched <laughs> or you'll maybe have had um, in, in a medical um, form, whether you're in the, a doctor's surgery or, or, or hospital, your heart rate variability is the variability um, that's monitored in one of these the, the machines and you see the little arrow and diagram going up and down, up and down. So it moves with every single beat. And this is, this is controlled by a real primitive part of our nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. So it's working behind the scenes. We've got zero consciousness of it, and it's automatically regulating our, regulating our heart, our blood pressure, breathing, and digestion, among various other key tasks. So a simple, simple test to think about your heart rate variability is, if you were to be sitting comfortably and place your two fingers either on your neck or wrist, like you would to take your heartbeat, eh, yeah, your heartbeat. If you breathe in slowly and then exhale out slowly, you do this really slowly and, and really concentrate on what you are feeling. On the inhale, your heart beats slightly quicker on the inhale than it does on the exhale okay now this these are 
these are not necessarily something you will automatically notice and feel. However, if you were to really sit comfortably, I'm going to say take two or three minutes to really sit, regulate your breath and have a feel of your pulse. And it's really interesting the fact that when you inhale, your heart is beating quicker than when you exhale. And we'll come to that reason. Why? So here we are, our autonomic nervous system, OK? So this is just, we're briefly going into this. Um, we call the, the kind of, I'm going to say the fight, flight, stressful, sympathetic um, nervous system is the, the things happen there. People expand, our fast and our shallow breathing, our heart pumps, and it, you can feel your your belly sometimes. It's um it's sometimes got knots. It says gut and active there, but sometimes it might be feeling of knots. And then the calmer part of the nervous system, these things on the right hand um happen. Now I just want to say that we need the stress part in our body. We're, we're wired to be aware of stressful situations, albeit they've changed over thousands of years. But it's, we can't, we can't, as much as we'd like to, we can't have our calm parasympathetic nervous system all the time. We actually need that stress part as well. So neither is bad, but it's just being conscious of it, shall we say. So the brain therefore is constantly processing information and instructing the rest of the body to stimulate or ra relax different functions. So as an example, it responds to a poorer night's sleep that, you know, so you will, if you've had a poorer night's sleep, you will feel that physiologically the next day or that negative interaction. You feel that physiologically, but also, after a delicious meal, you may feel sleepy. You feel again that physiologically. physiologically. So it's just interesting to st sometimes think of a moment when you need the nervous system sympathetically or when you need it, the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm going to use my um, running a marathon as an example. Well, you can't imagine the number of times that I need to go to the bathroom before the start of a marathon. So that's my sympathetic nervous system actually kicking into gear. I'm not, ha I don't have any control of that, but I'm there on the toilet, I'm, I'm there at the toilet, I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm raring to go. Haha, -ha, after the marathon, after the, um, you know, the, the, the elation of finishing, getting the medal, etc, etc, a couple of drinks, out for a big meal that night, boom, 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 my parasympathetic nervous system's coming into play. And I physically, mentally, I'm absolutely shattered. And that, ha you know, that, that's the nervous system again again working physiologically. So generally speaking, the inhalation increases our arousal slightly, gives us more energy, and the ex exhalation decreases our arousal and supports relaxation. Interesting, isn't it? When people are stressed or even nervous, somebody else might say to you, take a breath, take a breath which is a nice thing to say. However, what they really need to say is exhale, exhale, because on the inhale, we're actually adding to that arousal. It's actually the exhale that promotes the calming. So the level of activity of this, of our, this phenomenal nervous system can be measured natural fluctuations in the heart rate, and they're all linked to our breathing. So, Therefore, heart rate variability not only responds to breathing in and out, it responds to the overall rate of our breath. OK, so that's actually quite a complex thing, but I'm not really wanting to go into it. Just know the difference that an inhale and an exhale can make. But what we do want is we want a flexible system. So we don't want to be stuck in this shortened breath, high arousal bit, which is when if we are stressed, if we are anxious, that tends to be what we are in more. OK, what we want is a flexible system. 
Okay, so that's my real aim for going over what I've just um, talked about in terms of the physio physiology is think of it, you want a flexible system. So I'm going to talk about what um, what's referred to as coherent breathing. So the, this, this is something that um, two doctors in America, they're actually psychiatrists, have developed, Brown and Gerbach, uh, Gerberg, they're actually married. So I've given you that reference. I can pass on the name of the book as well at the end. So they have done extensive research in this area. And a lot of the research has come from um, trauma um, and its impact on mental and physical health and recovery from trauma, traumatic events. OK. Now they say ideally five breaths per minute completely. Um, um, what's the word? I mean, it was a way to use flatline. That's not really a good word. It completely balances our nervous system out. So thinking of that sympathetic and parasympathetic system working, it's completely at a balanced level when we breathe roughly five breaths per minute. Now, if you're breathing six, it's it's fine. You probably wouldn't be breathing five breaths per, mi per minute. Typically, you would have to sit and think about it. But I really think this is what this this particular breath pattern is a fantastic way to level yourself. So level yourself before physical activity. If you're if you're nervous about something, level yourself after physical activity. Level yourself before you have to go in for that job interview. Level yourself before you've had a stressful day at work and you want to come home and chill out. So it for me, this is this is the gold standard one. And simply all you need to do is try and regular, regulate your breath. So you're inhaling and exhaling roughly for five breaths per minute. So I'm going to give you a couple of sec, like 10 second warning. I'm actually giving you 15 seconds. So we're going to try this for a minute. What I will do is I will try and count the breath so that you, we, we try and gauge this five breaths per minute. And we're going to start now inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. OK, so that was almost bang on a minute. So probably like me, you would normally breathe a little bit quicker than that. Now, even just in that minute, I feel a little bit oh, a little bit fuzzier, I suppose. There's maybe a way to describe it. Um, you would want to be doing this. Now, uh, they they do say 10 minutes. OK, they do. Um, and this is a practice that you could develop daily. 10 minutes in a day, really out of 24 hours. How difficult is that to find? Probably not that difficult. However, if you're like everybody else just now, life is so, so busy. How often do you take 10 minutes just to sit and think about your breathing? Probably not that often. So I'm going to I'm going to challenge you with maybe five minutes. You know, just try in that for five minutes. Now you can use it as a regulation. 
you also can use it as just taking that, putting that into your day at some point and regulating. And know that you're regulating your actual nervous system. So your response system to all of life stressors, all of life events is naturally more regulated. Now, this is the one that I could talk about forever, but I won't. However, this would be the one if I was to, if you were to say, give me a breath practice, I would absolutely say, give the coherent breathing a trying. And it can be used to downregulate and upregulate, you know, um, you know, after a, after a, uh, a, a very, say, you're very sleepy, you've woke up, you're really, really, really sleepy and you know that, oh my goodness, I have got to, I've got various events on today, I need to like wake myself up a bit. You could upregulate and you could use it to balance yourself out. Okay, so the next breathing I am going to talk about um, is the one where you could use to get ready for action. Now there's various, various different um, energizing or activating breaths out there. And basically we would use this to increase our alertness, energize us and help focus our attention. What I would caution, and I probably should have said it uh, um, in front of the coherent one, is you know if you have any specific health concerns or respiratory conditions, I would be cautious. I would probably be more cautious using this one. However, it's one that we could use. Apparently, for example, Usain Bolt would use something like this. I mean, I know none of us are going to run 100 metres um, for a world record in nine seconds. <laughs> However, we could, you know, apparently he used energising breath before before his um, his race. So if you were needing like a quick quick fix, I'm gonna say before you have a a, a sporting event or a, an activity where you're really wanting to go for it, you could you could use this now. I would normally say take a few deep breaths to kind of center yourself. So maybe take a couple of coherent breaths. Example, you would inhale through your nose, fill your lungs up with air and exhale really forcefully through your mouth. And they say as some practices is to do it quickly. So exhale out quickly. So think about what you're doing there. You're inhaling big breath in. So that's activating the sympathetic nervous system and that exhale out. Quick one um, because you're not wanting to exhale out long, are you? Because that's the parasympathetic nervous system. So that makes it calm. So you're wanting to overactivate the sympathetic nervous system. So big inhale and then maybe quick. You could do that again and you will notice if you do that a couple of times, I certainly do. I'm like, whoa, I feel a bit that buzzy way. Um, hence again, just be careful. We don't want to do it um, with too much um, force, etc. cetera. Um, but it is an example of something that could just woo, get you fired up. But it is impor important to pay attention to any signs of discomfort or lightheadedness. You wouldn't want to be doing that, okay? But it's an example of a fire up. This next one I'm gonna speak about is our our sleepy breath, our chill out one. And at work as a psychologist, this is probably the one I speak more about. And this would be to help promote relaxation and prepare for sleep. So sleep is something I'm also um, quite interested in it in terms of a research perspective and looking at research and work um, around our sleep patterns and hygiene. But so to promote or help sleep, I'm going to refer to, or, or even just chill out, think about what we would want to do. We would want to exhale for longer than an inhale because that is our parasympathetic nervous system. We are wanting to increase or promote, shall we say. We want to activate the body's relaxation response. So a lovely, lovely, simple way is to inhale for four. 
and exhale for say six to eight counts. So if you struggle with six, um, sorry, eight, six is fine. Basically, you're wanting to exhale for longer than what you're wanting to inhale. What you need to try and do is not exhale all at once and then hold your breath for the remainder of the counts. You're wanting to try, try and keep it nice and evil, even, so not evil, even and relaxed. So say in for four, let's try it, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's hard to do when I'm speaking as well. But that is a lovely, lovely, simple way to help you chill out. And I can't recommend it enough if you are struggling with sleep or struggling to try and relax or you've just participated in that really high active um, motivating event or for some reason you've the only time you can exercise is eight, nine o'clock at night and you know how we're often wired after we do exercise, this would be one to um, help us chill out because we've got natural adrenaline running through our body post-exercise. So to help promote a calming down response, you could use this one. And I've got a little top tip there um, that if you keep your mind right on your breath there, you're also practicing a little bit of um, mindfulness at the same time and just helping soothe our mind, not necessarily um, thinking about nothing, but just helping us just to concentrate on one thing rather than the million things that we've got going. So I'm very aware that that is a, a, a huge whistle stop tour through breath and how you might use it, but I will stop sharing my screen there. Perfect. Thank, oh. thank you. Thank you so much, Ali. I feel out of breath myself. I feel <laughs> like I need to go and chill out. I've just, yeah, I know it was really quick, but hopefully there's some key oh, points I know. I in think, there. I think you covered everything really well. You can go and practice what you preach now and, and, and do some and chill out. <laughs> And it was interesting what you said. I could never, ever exercise at eight or nine o'clock in the evening because I know for a fact I would never get to sleep after it. But some yeah. people seem to adapt more easily to that, don't they? And sometimes life, like that's the only time that you can do it, yeah. you know, with kids or whatever late working. Sometimes it's just the way it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it was it was really interesting. So kind of picked up from you that, you know, there are ways, there are techniques that you can use um, your breath to kind of A, balance your nervous system or B, get energized and get fired up or C, kind of become more relaxed and, and sort of prepare yourself for sleep. So it was really interesting to 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 recognize you know that there are there are, and i'm sure there are lots more techniques as well out oh, there yeah <laughs> that's just it there is you know there is loads and loads out there and that's sometimes the thing there's too much information what 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 one mm. do i use so that was a kind of whistle stop of three key ones the coherent breath is the one that i'm most passionate about the regulating one um, because I really think there is something, it's a direct tap to our physiology. It's, we've all got it, you know, it doesn't cost anything. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about it. So just to um, remind ourselves, so the coherent breathing was the five breaths per minute, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now I find that interesting. You mentioned um, heart rate variability, but I guess there's also breathing rate variability amongst individuals as well isn't there because I know my breathing rate's really low I only breathe around eight breaths per minute so okay. for me to go to five doesn't feel like a lot, you know, a lot. It doesn't feel like a, a stretch but yeah. I can imagine if somebody was maybe sitting around 20 breaths per minute to go down to five would be quite yeah. challenging wouldn't it 
a absolutely, and it's not easy, and that's why you know the, the 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 doctors they go through a huge bit trying to get your breath down to that, you know, to to, to try and regulate your 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 system, and if you're breathing, yeah. There's natural variability in our breath, but mm -hmm. if our breathing is really short and shallow, we're usually carrying, you know, like we can be carrying tension unconsciously. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just even drawing awareness to to that to that fact. So and yeah. it yeah, it just affects absolutely everything. So yeah. Super. What was the name of the book that you were going to recommend? Yes, so it's called The Healing Power of the Breath. And um, it's sim it, they refer to it as simple techniques to reduce stress and anxiety, enhance concentration and balance your emotion emotions. Um, and it's Richard Brown and Patricia Gerbard. Oh, it's Gerbarg. Brown and Gerbarg. Yeah, I can easily send, I can email those details out. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time today. And uh, I'll just end by saying good luck with your PhD because oh. it's a, a, a big undertaking. It's a massive <laughs> undertaking, one that I'm not sure I wish I'd started, but I'm not going to stop now. <laughs> so, I hope that all goes well for you. Thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.